All right, RevLiM YouTube subscribers and members, vascular access in trauma patients with hemorrhagic shock. So I've seen a mix of things in these patients. So first of all, let's start with the pull. You have a hypotensive trauma patient who needs access. The patient is altered and in need of resuscitation. Your go-to access is, I wrote down intraosseous, peripheral IVs, central venous catheter. On X, most people, 50%, picked peripheral IVs. On YouTube, most people picked intraosseous access. And that's exactly kind of my sense of when you ask people what their go-to is, everyone's got a different answer. I will tell you personally, I think IO access is really underused. It's underused in cardiac arrest, and I think it's really underused in bad traumas. And I wanna go over a paper that was recently published Moving the needle on time to resuscitation, an east prospective multi-center study of vascular access in hypotensive injured patients using trauma video review. So the PMID number at the bottom, as I always do in all these videos, so you can just go to PubMed and pull the paper yourself. And the clinical question these authors were trying to answer is, in hypotensive trauma patients, which access type, IO versus peripheral IV versus central venous catheter, is the fastest and has the highest success rate. So this is what they did. This was a prospective observational multi-center trial from 19 trauma centers. So these patients weren't randomized, but all these traumas were recorded on video. And then somebody went back and watched the traumas and they used that trauma video review to evaluate the resuscitations of these hypotensive patients, which they defined as systolic blood pressure of less than or equal to 90. And then the ones that were needing vascular access, they were able to actually get a timestamp from start to finish of each of the types of access. So here's the outcomes. Success rate, they define that as blood seen in IV tubing or successful flushing of catheter. Duration of access was defined as interval between needle entering the skin and successful placement or procedural stop for failed attempts. And then the last thing that they looked at was time to initiation of resuscitation, which was time to visualization of IV fluids or blood administration. So there were 1,410 vascular attempts in 581 hypotensive trauma patients. The most common injuries were gunshot wounds, which is about a third of the population, and then motor vehicle collision, which was about a quarter of the population. The initial systolic blood pressure in these patients was in the 70s. Initial GCS was about eight, and the overall mortality in this patient population was 44.7%, so pretty sick patient population. Now, of those 1,400 vascular access attempts, 900 of those were peripheral IVs, 200 of those were IOs, and about 250 of those were central venous catheters. Here's what they found in terms of success rate. So they basically looked at first attempt, if that attempt failed, then what happened during a second attempt, if that failed, then what happened in a third attempt. And across the board, first, second, or third attempt, IO was superior to all the other types of access. And I'm gonna look at first attempt success specifically. 93% was IO, peripheral IV was 67%, and central venous catheter was 59%. And what's interesting is when we get to the second and third attempt, peripheral IV and central venous catheter kind of switch positions. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in this video. Now, duration to access, IO 36 seconds, peripheral IV 44 seconds, and central venous catheter 171 seconds. Now, I will tell you that the difference between IO and peripheral IV were not statistically significant, but from a time standpoint, they were different. And so IO was also faster. So not only was it more successful, but it was faster than the other two types of access. Now time to resuscitation initiation, they didn't break down peripheral IV and central venous catheter into separate groups. They just kind of lumped those two together and compared it to IO. And you can see that it was 5.8 minutes versus 6.7 minutes. So it was just over a minute faster with IO for time to resuscitation and blood products. Now, if there was no access at the time of arrival, so I talked about that second and third attempt. If we look at the time to access, IO was actually two minutes faster, 3.6 minutes versus five minutes in the other two. 
And it may be that arriving without access or failure of that first attempt could be a surrogate for procedural difficulty and prolonged times with IV access and maybe something to think about just going to IO instead of fudging around with getting an IV or central venous catheter. So the clinical bottom line, I think in these sick hypotensive altered patients that are in hemorrhagic shock that have no vascular tone because they have no volume, IO access should be first line strategy in these trauma patients with hypotension or in extremis as a bridge to more definitive care. So we know that in reality, what's happening is we're doing all these things at the same time. But my point is, is that we don't think about IO till it's an afterthought. And I think it should be one of the first things we do, just like we do it in cardiac arrest. It's going to be the fastest, it's going to be the most successful, and it's going to allow initiation of resuscitation the fastest, more so than these other kind of modalities. Now, I'm not saying don't do these other modalities, and I'm not saying don't try and do them all at the same time. I'm just saying don't forget about IO. IO is going to be faster, it's going to be more successful than peripheral IVs and central venous catheters, which is going to lead to faster resuscitation. Now, whether that has an impact on patient-oriented outcomes like mortality and morbidity, this study didn't answer that question. But I think from a logical and pragmatic standpoint, faster and more success is going to lead to things happening faster, which means potentially improving outcomes like trauma-induced coagulopathy, um, replacing blood products, etc. Well, there you have it. Vascular access in trauma patients with hemorrhagic shock. I think IO is underutilized and should be something we should consider. I hope this video was helpful. Please leave me your thoughts, comments, and questions. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, until next time.